So here we go with the modeling thing. Uh, as always, you can download the model, the final model from Gramroad. Uh, it's in the description, the link, and also the times for what I do when in the video. Let's hear making or setting up the reference that I will show you guys how to do in the UV video. Uh, you can also check that in the description. But anyway, we have the reference set up. And I'm gonna always uh, try and you know get the big uh, forms first and get the big shapes down first and start with primitives. So here I see that it has like a big handle, so I start out with a cylinder and there it is uh, also like jumping right into editable poly and matching my model f to the reference here. So I'm uh, gonna try and get the shape of the head of this shovel here quickly, the silhouette of it. Uh, as you can see I'm moving the vertexes in one of the viewports but I'm constantly checking or watching the other viewport uh, where I have my reference so there are two model, two shovel, shovel models here one, one is in front of the reference rotated and one of and the other one is on the axis so it's easier to change and modify it because it's aligned with the axis with the x, y and z coordinates so it's easier to move the vertices but the other uh, instanced version of this shovel is in front of the reference so I can see how it looks as you can see uh, I'm using the symmetry modifier that we talked about here mm, and as you can see also that uh, you can apply and stack two symmetry modifiers on top of each other so mm, this shovel is symmetrical two ways one in the middle and one from top to bottom so I'm gonna take advantage of that and use two separate symmetry modifiers and there it is it's the model in front of the reference hide it, unhide it and check uh, if it works add some more polygons uh, because you want to keep in mind how far it will be from the camera so this shovel will not be showed from close up so it doesn't need that much polygons it can be more square so that's what I'm thinking there all the time how close it will be to the camera you can get uh, to pretty low poly counts if you you know keep the model very simple here I'm trying to use the same method here, but eventually I will just eyeball uh, the model to the reference. So as you can see, this is how I most of the time set up my objects. One object is instanced in front of the reference and the other uh, is aligned with the axis. So the same, the two boxes will, you know, uh, are, are linked together, see if I modify one, the other one will be modified too, but uh, in this example I will hide it. Uh, anyway, it's really mm, important I think when you're modeling to avoid 90 degree angles. Uh, as you can see I'm pulling down uh, some of the edges that otherwise would be 90 degrees. Um, yeah, it's just a good idea to keep in mind, of course, not all the time you will be able to do this and it's not necessary to do it uh, always, but it's just a good direction to keep in mind, uh, keep everything a bit, you know, more or less, less close to 90 degrees. There are some issues in 3D that comes with uh, too harsh angles, so try and avoid that as much as possible uh, and as you can see I always start out mm, with the big shapes, get the big form first, the box and then detail it up, give it uh, this, this lock or I don't know what this is but just give it, <coughs> put it there and here let's, as you can see I moved one of the edges a bit down so it's not 90 degrees and then 
<coughs> basically the box is done it's not too detailed because it will never be really close to the camera so it's more than enough to have this many um, polygons added to it yeah just always start starting out with a primitive and keeping in mind camera distance is really a key thing you know uh, again setting up the reference image make one cylinder here and create a copy I mean an instance of it so if I modify this model which are easy to modify because it's aligned with the axis then you can you know modify the other one um, it's, uh, I use instances a lot so I think they are pretty useful um, when creating models uh, just makes everything easier and quicker and here I'm lining up the cylindrical shape or cylindrical form and following uh, the reference image I have behind it uh, we are in border mode as you can see and I'm just using the shift uh, and move to drag out new polygons as we discussed earlier in the first video quickly mm, move, rotate and scale the new edges there and keeping in mind the silhouette all the time how, the, how it looks and how closely it matches the concept and how far we will see the object from the camera if we were to make a whole movie with this uh, scorpion tail and there would be like close-up shots going through the whole thing then probably we would need much much more polygons uh, we would mm, like model out some wrinkles and everything or I don't know what kind of detail a scorpion tail has but you know we would model them out more clearly but because it will be seen so far from the camera it doesn't need that many details uh, and of course it's a big scorpion tail because in Fallout 2 the scorpions were big as fuck so there we go the scorpion tail is done and uh, yeah I believe after this we will jump right in to make and start working on the character mm, uh, or eh, no not I think we'll do VIX radio first so uh, let's let's do that quickly or not haha <laughs> this is uh, the magazine for the gu guns and bullets it was a frequent item in the game so I wanted to make it and there you go big forms just a box and then cut it in half move it slightly and it's a magazine now so let's do VIX radio now so yeah VIX radio uh, was a pretty infamous item in Fallout 2 uh, I always uh, left it in a town that I shouldn't have left it in I always had to travel back for it so I just wanted to pay tribute to it and as you can see big forms first making an instance of a box and rotating it in front of the uh, reference image as you can see I'm modifying one of the boxes mm, and it and all the changes I make to this one happens to the other one so that's a really easy and a handy tool to use and still continuing with the uh, big, biggest forms I see that there is a big shape on the uh, top side of this radio pulling that edge down a bit to avoid some 90 degree things mm, and also I notice another shape on the concept and I add a random box here and my ear just started ringing randomly I don't know why uh, let's hope it will stop soon uh, anyway made a I don't know that's a wheel or something uh, it was a pretty low resolution reference but I try and guess what kind of forms and shapes there are so uh, still just getting the biggest shapes I see down 
and you know pulling edges and collapsing the, or deleting some of the polygons scaling them down and capping them again uh, it's uh, everything we learned about like using the element selecting one of the elements using the shift holding down shift and the movement to make another copy here let's uh, just make the switch on the side so we can turn it on and off um, I believe I'm gonna do the antenna now yeah it's a big uh, big form this cylindrical sh shape with uh, really just a few polygons I think it's a four-sided cylinder and then you know jump right into editable poly and uh, moving the vertices pulling out some shapes uh, with using the drag and shift thing and there you go <laughs> the antenna is now done for Rix radio uh, just adjusting some of the vertices and making sure it reads a bit better uh, and this is something that was totally unnecessary uh, unnecessary later on I noticed when I textured this thing uh, that this uh, cut well, will not be visible ever so I think this radio in general was a bit more detailed than it should have been uh, it uses uh, more polygons than it should um, but you know it happens sometimes uh, but it's important to you know keep the camera distance in mind all the time and the level of detail that you need um, for the item or object or character that you're making so that's it for VIX Radio and I believe now we're going to jump right in and start creating the character um, so let's do that uh, I mean let's do that now or not yeah just save it quickly and then jump right in so the body of the character uh, uh, is gonna be I think pretty simple but let's see first of all I'm setting up the reference image here quickly um, and I'm gonna use that um, as much as I can it's really I think it's a good idea when modeling or when I'm making something uh, for a project or for a freelance job or something if they give me a reference it's uh, always a good idea to follow it as closely as possible because they already accepted the reference or the concept art that you that they give you, that they give me. So um, if I can get that uh, get the three D thing as close to it as possible, then most likely it will be accepted uh, quicker, and then you know it will be. Uh, you know, as as good as it can be because like there are some crazy good concept artists out there and it's just uh, the task is only to bring their ideas to life in 3D so it's uh, really important to be able to do it and make it as close as as, as you can get it to the reference so here again the big forms first just a cylindrical shape uh, and I moved it in front of the reference image I have we are pretty lucky because it's a side view so we don't have to mess around too much with the perspective uh, with the boots at least and then as you can see just uh, pushing pulling and dragging uh, the polygons and vertices um, I mean modeling basically is just getting vertices edges and polygons into the right place in a visually appealing way so it's uh, pretty easy to you know start with it but it's kinda hard to master but by with time and practice uh, it can be it can be improved upon uh, no matter on what level you start out at so not to worry it will it will come a second nature uh, but here as you can see uh, I'm just trying to make it um, 
more close or more closer to the shape of a boot from like top view or side view and rotating the model a lot to see what I'm doing uh, and how it how would how it looks in 3D. It's really important to rotate the model a lot, I think, uh, to check it from many different angles and many different perspectives. Um, and uh, yeah, basically that's it. Um, and also here, as you can see, I'm just thickening the end side of the boot to make it more um, like leg or, or, or uh, boot-like. <laughs> And then adding a separate uh, like plateau for th the bottom side of the boot to make it more interesting. Um, and quickly closing down the edges below. It's a good idea and focus when modeling to keep everything or uh, the polygons um, four si four sided. So try and avoid. Uh, uh, any polygon that's that has more than four sides, three-sided polygons, uh, so triangles basically, is okay. It can be used, but for deformation purposes uh, and even for UVing, it's much better to keep what you can uh, four-sided. So here I'm quickly cutting in some more edges to do some fold. Uh, I think I'm gonna cut more. Yeah, here, uh, focusing on the silhouette to see how how it looks. So I'm just gonna cut some stuff in there to break up the silhouette and make it more, you know, folded and more fold-like. So that's what I did there. Using soft selection is something that I do a lot. Uh, just move the model around a little bit and massage the, the areas that kind of not working sometimes so mm, here I'm starting and pulling the top border of this boot up with the drag and pu pull and drag I mean uh, with holding down the shift key again now you know shift key and dragging out the tie area and I'm gonna do the character in such a way that it's posed in a natural way in the middle of the scene. But uh, I also have the whole character instanced in front of the reference. So that way I can close and I can closely match my reference up. I mean my model up to the reference uh, very closely. But in the middle of the scene, my character will be standing in a natural way and that's really important if you want to rig uh, and after animate a character it's really important to model it in a T or an A pose uh, I will you know link something here in the video uh, in the post process to share you uh, to show you guys what an A pose and a T pose is and what it means but generally you just want to keep and model the character or you know monster or anything you do in a natural uh, stance so uh, the riggers will like you and that's an important thing so here I'm working on the tie a bit more uh, as you can see on the right it's straightened out but on the left it's bent to the to match the concept so this is how I decided to do this model here. Uh, I think for me it was for me it is a really uh, quick and easy workflow, and also uh, I like to keep things separate sometimes, so I don't get messed up uh, or confused on what what's where on the model, you know. So here I'm starting with the shapes for the hip and laying down laying down how it will look. Again, it's just uh, holding down the shift key and moving edges most of the time um, and figuring out the polygon flow, the correct polygon flow there. Uh, I will link here again um, 
a document or something for Polycam, from Polycam to explain how and why you want to keep your loops clean uh, because for animation it's really important to have separate loops uh, edge loops which you can you know rig to the bones or connect to the bones um, maybe there should be another video about that but as a first step you don't really need to worry about it that much I think uh, just try and keep, keep everything uh, m most of the polygons for four-sided and try and work with a clean topology uh, there will be a bunch of links in the description which you can check about clean topology and stuff like that so follow those in, if you want to learn more about these things it's a mm, it's a kinda not, not that complicated subject but it's something that you know you just have to learn and get a feel for it because it's like a standard thing uh, you really just want to make and keep keep it clean. It's easier to work with. It's easier to modify, and it will and it will give better end results. So definitely make sure to uh, check up on topology uh, later. So now we have the hip uh, placed in the correct uh, um, position, and I decided to add a camera and match the angle of view that the concept has. So. I noticed that on the concept uh, the camera is about uh, in the height of the ear so it's in, on the level of the ear around the, on the face of the character and we are looking down so I move the camera up a bit to the face uh, level and then turning it down a bit and now as you can see the geometry is much more lined up with the concept and that is exactly what I wanted to do and as you can see here I have a symmetry modifier on the hip mm, so I can just do one side of the hip and it will be automatically copied over or symmetrized <laughs> if that's a word to the other side um, so yep massaging the areas here to make it more clean and here you know just wanted to mention quickly that modeling is uh, like basically drawing in 3d so if you don't know where to move the vertexes and how a hip area looks uh, in in a 2d uh, environment so if you cannot draw it or you haven't drawn it before then you won't be able to uh, model it in 3d so i really encourage you guys to draw and pick up uh, my drawing as a hobby and start messing around with it because it will be extremely beneficial for your uh, 3d works i mean really it's just uh, the best thing that uh, i started and picked up uh, along the years just drawing more and more mm, and if you draw a lot then you, you know you go to schools and studies and meet people there and draw from real life then eventually you will kind of start to feel how it should look when you're modeling so I don't really use references here for the hip area or or the legs or anything I mean you know other than the concept but the concept is just a 2D image sometimes it doesn't give you enough information to make, translate something into 3D uh, quickly and efficiently uh, so sometimes you have to like improvise uh, some parts of the model and drawing will help you a lot uh, tremendously in that so I encourage you guys to pick that up and uh, experiment with it so now we have like some kind of base for the chest um, just this with the same method you know creating a cylinder a basic primitive for the arm moving it in front of the reference image and rotating it in see um, how it matches up with the seam on the um, on the jacket there it will not line up 100% correctly 
but I'm just trying to get it as close as possible. Sometimes you will notice that on some of the concepts you just cannot line it up completely, uh, perfectly. You just, after that, you, you just have to, you know, rely on your eye and try and eyeball it and match the feel of the concept mm -hmm. uh, as close as you can. So here I made the arms mm, quickly and moved them into their mm, place on the model in the middle. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I will later on sew, sew all these uh, different pieces of geometry together at the end of the video but for now I'm trying to keep them as uh, separate objects that way I can you know move um, the objects and rotate them to match the reference and uh, pose the character uh, as well as you know, modeling it in an A pose. So I'm doing simultaneously the two things. That is a hard word to, to pronounce, but you know, I hope you got it. So now I'm trying to get the spine and the line of the spine um, a bit more closely. And let's sip some water because I can't speak properly now. Now I'm doing the neck uh, or the collar of the pullover thing uh, or the hoodie and the same thing, create a primitive, move it to its place and then uh, start and make changes to the model in the origo. So uh, let's start and fix this up, deleting some of the polygons and you know, scale, scale up the top side because I see it on the reference that uh, it's a bit scaled. Um, and then uh, this one, I didn't use symmetry modifier because uh, cylindrical shapes are much easier to modify if they are not symmetrical because you can just can pull uh, parts of the model uh, out more easily and use scaling to match it um, to the concept. It might not make any sense now, but you will, uh, if you try it out, you will might you might find that you know keeping them uh, not symmetrical is easier sometimes. <coughs> so trying to get the feel for the forearms here, just rotating it in place, and you know try and pose the character mm, and match mm, match the forearms position to one on the reference and then going back to the model in the origo and starting to pull parts of it uh, out mm, and you know making it proportionally longer a bit so it you know actually matches human proportions a bit better um, so now it's more visible here that I have one of the one of the objects posed and one of the objects are you know in a natural standing uh, A pose so I think it's for me it's just a really quick way to work and yeah I would recommend you try give it a try Mm. and you know bending the forearm so it matches the reference as well uh, I know I jump a lot around in the viewport but I think it's really important to check the model from a lot of different angles uh, because you know in game it will be checked from all of the angles and you want to make sure that you know it looks good uh, from all of the angles uh, and get it get it uh, to look and feel as the concept so right now I'm made I'm just trying to uh, make the connection between the chest and uh, arm area and I did that by basically copying uh, one of the polygons uh, or the loop of polygons 
into, into a chest and attaching them to it. So right now, as you can see, I kind of have a start for the socket of the arms or the shoulder area basically on the chest and I'm pulling some of the vertexes or edges out here. Uh, you really want to keep the areas where the joints are very very clean uh, like just having separate loop an edge loop for the arm an edge loop for the armpit and an edge loop for the shoulder area so that way you can transform properly uh, there are many ways and many different you know topologies that you can do on the shoulder area um, and definitely some of the companies will uh, prefer one type and others will prefer a different one but for you guys I think it's just uh, firstly just try and learn one of the methods and later you can pick up uh, basically any kind of topology you want to make um, because if you get the logic of how to build geometry in 3D after it you can you know uh, apply to many different principles like a low poly game art or high poly game art uh, or cinematic things so topology is basically just um, the way the model and the, the way the edges flow and the way the model is built so that's something that you know uh, I will try and link in the description to have to have you guys some uh, reading material also and you can check it out it's a bigger subject but it's very important in modeling so and definitely look that up and here I starting I'm I are already getting close to finish the like the jumpsuit of this character mm, and then I think we will move into making the pistol and as you can see here I have the the character here posed pretty much and then uh, I will do the other side sometimes in the near future so yeah yeah, let's do the pistol and the knife. So I think it's a good idea for you guys to uh, watch these videos with an active mindset and uh, try and, you know, guess what I will do next and uh, how I will approach, uh, for example, this pistol and how I will, how I will start to make it uh, and see how will you do it differently and you know just guess what what I'll do next because you know I uh, and you can also uh, criticize uh, so maybe I do it in another way than you would uh, maybe yours is a better way or it would be more uh, convenient for you so yeah just uh, discover and experiment how, how you would like to you know approach these things uh, because modeling is, you know, there are some styles there also. So some people start with the big shapes, uh, some people start with the smaller shapes. So it's very important to find a workflow that, that you really like. Uh, because, you know, you will like 30 or 40 percent of 3D is like modeling. So if you hate it, uh, then then it will be just... A hard career for you but if you can pick up stuff that you like and pick up workflows that you know fits your method of thinking and fits your way of uh, you know your artistic needs or something like that then you will enjoy modeling more and uh, your models will be that much better so maybe box modeling which is what I do here just pulling edges and you know stuff like that uh, is not something that you like it's too tedious too methodical for you maybe you're more in, more into uh, like freely shaping and f uh, forming the model as you want it to then maybe you should try out ZBrush and try how you can make you know weapons and pistols with Dynamesh and using the 
high poly modeling tools that they have in there. It's an amazing software also, and it you know at the end of the day they will get you the same end result. Uh, but maybe the way you build the end result in that program is more appealing to you. So yeah, I think it's really important. Uh, I wanted to uh, talk about that. But here, as you can see, trying to get the big forms again, um, shaping the handle of the pistol a bit more, and mm, making it, making the like the top view of it more. Um, how would you say it? So it's more easily, you know, grabbed by the character. So it has a proper shape attached to it. Uh, yep, the same thing again here. Just made a, you know, reference image, and I put my model in front of it. Uh, I think modeling weapons and pistols and stuff like that is a really, really good beginning exercise because because the end result will look really cool because weapons and pistols and swords and stuff like that will or sometimes or most of the time have has really cool designs to it so yeah this is what i would recommend for you guys also find a good reference on our station a weapon or a dagger and try and make that um, the end result will look very really cool but the modeling is not that hard uh, or i mean you have to learn a lot of things and you will uh, you know get uh, various informations on how you have to how you how you can make uh, different parts of geometries because like on this weapon there is cylindrical shapes there is the handle there is a box shape there is different kinds of silhouettes and interesting shapes going on there and uh, you really really want to learn how to make these and think and and uh, think of how you can build up a model from zero um, so yeah here it's uh, just focusing uh, on the topology and remembering what kind of planner changes I want to have on the model because when I'm painting or when I get to the texturing phase uh, for me it's Mm, I find it visually more interesting if there are a lot of planner changes on the model and that the, uh, that, that I can emphasize with the texture. So by, at this time when I'm uh, modeling, I'm always thinking about how I will texture the, the thing. So it's important to think ahead, I think, uh, as much as you can. Uh, of course, when you're starting out, it will uh, be harder because you don't have any reference or experience. But in time, mm, applying what you learned in your previous project, when you started texturing something and then you realize that, oh my god, this is totally modeled completely wrong. So uh, then you have to go back and fix it. So that's a, that's a tedious task. or yeah, it can be done, of course, but it's easier to just get it uh, right for the first try. <laughs> uh, it's not happens uh, every time, but you know, it's a good uh, thing to aim for. Anyway, so applying what you learned f from the previous texturing to your new modeling uh, is, you know, I think it's crucial or essential thing to do. Yep, now I'm starting to build a hammer for this pistol here and, you know, just modeling the silhouette first with the drag and pull, which you are by this time, I think you're very bored with. So, uh, just quickly watching some, checking some references for uh, pistols. Uh, to see how that hammer area is modeled there. Yeah, it's also, I think, a good idea to, you know, um, check references frequently on areas that you don't know how should how it should look. Uh, you have Google for that, of course, it's really easy. 
and then you can apply what you learn there and uh, model model your uh, pistol or weapon accordingly uh, <coughs> because on the reference most of the time there will be areas that mm, it's it's not visible how it's done but you can check and find references and fig figure out the areas that are you know not that defined or in shadow or in the other side of the reference so uh, it's always there is you have to you know sometimes be a little bit of a concept artist also uh, improvising some of the areas uh, that you don't have a like pitch perfect reference for so yep uh, for me it's really easy to start with cylindrical shapes or if I have a concept that I'm doing I really try and look for cylindrical shapes uh, on the model because uh, cylinder shapes will also tell you how thick the model is it's, um, hmm, it's hard to how, to how to explain it but if I see a, uh, this gun from the side I'm not really sure how thick it is in depth in the Z dimension but if there is a cylindrical shape on the texture on the reference then if I make that cylindrical shape then I will know for sure that that area is uh, that that area looks like that in 3D. Uh, I really hope you understand <laughs> what I'm trying to say here, but uh, you know, by time, uh, maybe you will uh, have your own workflow figured out for this. But uh, it's always a, a guessing game or a feeling game to see how some of the things that are on the reference translates to 3D and how thick they are in the Z dimension. So I once saw a weapon online that was modeled as uh, an X but when I checked the reference it was modeled from the reference was clearly a hammer so uh, somehow that hammer got uh, translated into an X um, so I don't know it happens to the best of us <laughs> so it, uh, it's something to look out for just keep in mind the thickness of the thickness of the model at all times and try and you know guess it right um, so yeah mm, we're getting close to finishing this pistol I think or maybe not I don't know what I didn't do here is adding a trigger because uh, we don't want this weapon to maybe fire or go off accidentally so that's uh, something I was really conscious about it was not a mistake I just thought, didn't want to make a trigger for it <coughs> So, yep, I don't know what this is, uh, but uh, I wanted to model it because it was on the concept. So, again, with the, uh, with, with the big forms, I saw that it's like a repeating uh, cylindrical shape. So I made one and duplicated it three times, collapsed them together, and then from that I started making the other shapes here. So right now it's just closing the top and bottom side of this uh, new object I made. Here fixing uh, some of the areas with, uh, with the bottom side of the pistol and then just finishing up the hammer and that, that area. Uh, as you can see I had the silhouette there, I'm going to finish it quickly and then add the side with the bridge tool, cap it down, uh, move it a little bit down so it's going to get lost in the shadow there because the inside of that uh, hammer area will be 
entirely uh, not black but really really dark so we, we will not see the end of the geometry there so I don't have to worry about where it goes or what it does one thing you can keep in mind also um, while modeling is if you put floating geometry there like if you check the bottom side of the weapon with the hand uh, with the that uh, wooden thing mm, on the front uh, you can see that it's not so sewed into the model it's floating there uh, it's good because it's less polygon that way it's bad because it's uh, going to be harder harder to paint so it's a balanced thing uh, you want to you know figure out your own method methods there also uh, like the handle of the pistol is so sewed together with the, with the metal part and that will make it really easy to paint um, and also the the barrel is mm, uh, sewed together also so it will be easy to paint that way but yeah so th this is the weapon basically just deleting one side and making it symmetrical we're gonna quickly move it mm, into the hand of my posed character here and then figure uh, then I figure out how closely it matches the concept from this angle and then mm, I'm not sure what will happen next or what I'm doing here but yeah I think it's really important to get uh, get the logic of modeling down first and then using your knowledge of topology uh, and combining it with your knowledge uh, of drawing and the sense of shapes and silhouette you can make you can start and make uh, pretty cool models so mm, silhouette is also really important and shapes in 3d are really important uh, i will try and link videos to the description about that but you can see here is starting out with a big shape and then moving my my model uh, following the silhouette of this dagger of this reference here and from there I build up the the weight or I mean the depth of, of this uh, handle here mm. but of course you could have started this out from a cylinder and pulled that through there's like a bunch of ways you can make this handle and you know some of these ways will sorry suitable for you and uh, for your style but uh, mm, it will in in time you will you know figure out uh, what kind of logic help, helps you and what kind of logic is uh, suitable for your uh, style and yeah i think uh, i cannot e emphasize this enough just you know look at what i do and pick up the things that uh, you think I do well and leave out the things that uh, you think I do badly and just constantly try and consciously move into a direction uh, of modeling and working that you enjoy and generate and create your own workflow I mean there, there are a lot of people I met during my, uh, during my career so far that you know just really hated modeling this way they were they wouldn't do 3d at all if there is only uh, this way of modeling but luckily there are a lot of ways of modeling you can do zbrush also or like infusion 360 you can do uh, nerbs nerbs or i don't know what the name of it but different kind of modeling so there is uh, ways to discover here and experiment with but I'm just used to this one and also I kind of like it and I'm, I became pretty e efficient over the years so this is why I do it this way but you know 
keep an open mind and experiment. I uh, really encourage you guys to do that. Um, yeah, I would say that's it basically. Figure out how the correct topology is and how, how the industry uses uh, topology and wireframes and uh, then combine it with the knowledge you learn from drawing and from the mileage that you do in modeling and that way if you can combine those two together with the knowledge of good and interesting shapes and proportions just combining all those two into a big bowl and then uh, mix them together and then you can become like a really good modeler or an efficient modeler so let's here quickly make the flask and again with the primitive starting out with the box and moving it to the reference adding a divide scaling it a bit and then you know selecting top and bottom side and making a little bit of bevel there or you know edge there and mm, close them down make it symmetrical here yes very good and then I believe I'm gonna bend this uh, really soon um, but yeah I decided to add a material to my character because it was really just annoyed me <laughs> with the with the gray thing so uh, I'm trying sometimes to just have fun uh, with the way I present the model during the making and you know make it appealing even though it's like half finished so yeah I think it looks better with this blue thing applied and here you can see my uh, uh, yep so here you can see like I'm gonna add a band modifier to this one which we learned in the first part of this series like here gonna cut it very soon very soon and here applying bend and bend it a little bit with like a few degrees and then make it less uh, square so it's more smooth more high high poly quotes in quotes because it's still a low poly thing but I decided to divide up some of the edges and make it more smoother so there we have it uh, the flask is now ready to be uh, used so it's also an iconic thing from the game by the way um, yeah so I'm not sure what I'm going to do next here uh, probably the big boy uh, or not so yeah just you know rotating around the model a lot and lo looking at it from different angles and setting it uh, different things up with my reference and as you can see the character is building slowly very slowly it's getting you know more and more big shapes and big a big uh, proportion of things in there uh, we're not going to do the head maybe I will do a separate video in the future but in this series we will not be bothered with the head um, because not <laughs> and there you go uh, this was the knife and the pistol and the flask uh, I'm just, uh, just gonna quickly finish the other side of the leg here so I can check the mm, proportions and let's jump into making the hand so with the hand I think it's like uh, really important to remember that mm, how important drawing is for 3D so uh, hands are pretty <coughs> uh, a complex shape and they have like yeah, weird angles to them and weird shapes uh, but it can be done it can be learned so uh, if you draw like a hundred anatomy studies of a hand from different angles you will be you know much better off than just s jumping right into 3d and blindly starting uh, modeling a hand but here I'm not gonna use references here because <coughs> it's just a sty stylized hand 
um, but maybe I should have done it but you know mistakes were made in the process uh, don't hate me uh, so there it is started with the fingers quickly uh, or one of the fingers I'm gonna model one finger and then copy it over uh, and make instanced version of the same finger uh, five times or four times because the thumb will be completely different so here we go at first it's always like the proportions are off really um, so it's like a lot of pushing pulling and scaling the things uh, in order for it to match um, what a hand could look like stylized so here you already can see that I'm copying over the original finger as an instance and also the pivot point of the finger is in the root of it so it's really easy to rotate them and you know place them correctly there is like a bunch of uh, you know rules with the hand that you can learn like the how long the palm is compared to the finger and um, stuff like that which will all all help you in modeling the hand uh, what is like basic rule of thumb is you really want to be able to draw the hand from imagination and without reference uh, in order for you to make a proper uh, model of it so <coughs> uh, I think it's uh, not completely rec recorded how I do the hand here or I will get the general things down and then I will fix it slowly but here as you can see I'm pulling down the mm, pinky side of the hand here a little bit and making it more thin and also mm, as you can see I used uh, I believe eight sided cylinders for the fingers um, I think it's a good number here mm can always like experiment how much uh, you know how, how many sided cylinder you want to use for the fingers but it's a pretty low poly model so I think uh, it was enough the eight sided and I made the fingernails quickly there also I think you saw it or maybe not rewind the video mm. also used push modifier on the fingers a little bit uh, so uh, they are a bit more thick mm. as you can see I add some mm, suggest suggestion of the bones or indicate where they are on the model with that bump so they have more you know char character to them and also like you can use angular shapes or low p the low poliness of the model to make it feel like a bone and you can use like smoother surfaces to make it feel more fleshy or more chubby so uh, that's what I did with the joints of the fingers the top side is pretty <coughs> angular and the bottom side is kinda soft here I'm checking the proportions of the fingers like rotating it down and then seeing how how it would rotate down it's uh, kind of feels okay uh, maybe the, the palm is a bit short here maybe but I will figure it out later uh, here starting to add the thumb uh, thumbs are pretty tricky uh, to add because they are coming out from a uh, like from a weird place of the hand but you know this is ti this is the time to emphasize that it's just uh, like a necessary thing to draw uh, in order for uh, you to become you know better at uh, modeling or 3d in general drawing and painting these are all things that will really really help and they can be you know done in a fun way also you don't have to like mm, make uh, study paintings of uh, uh, old old women in a old studio somewhere in the city you can do like fun art exercises also like 
drawing from the imagination and you know just relaxation things with, with drawing and also like uh, going on Pinterest, sh finding a lot of images of like uh, weightlifters, ballet dancers, or everything uh, you want to uh, draw or paint or model, like skateboard tricks or whatever, and just train your eye to uh, the human proportions and uh, the proportions of nature, basically. So. Uh, by each drawing and each vertex you move and each model you finish you will you know get closer to understanding this uh, rhythm rhythm and proportion of nature and then you can you know it will come you it, it will become your your uh, you know your um, process and the way you model things it will just be your unconscious thing in the back of your head like oh is this looking good or not and I think it's just part of the fun like training the eye and you know your imagination to uh, produce some interesting things and more uh, appealing visual um, proportions and shapes and values and this can all be achieved by you know just mileage so if you continue with this craft and make some models and drawings then eventually you will get to a point where you, will, you won't really have to think uh, on uh, at some of the things on on some of the things it will become just second nature to make stuff look good mm, but of course there is always struggle there uh, also so there is always new challenges in art but this is something that can be, you know, learned and it becomes more easy uh, as time goes by, I think. Or at least for me it feels like that. So here we go and the thumb is kind of mm, half finished there, uh, as you can see. Um, and with the hand it's also extremely important to keep the loops and, mm, you know, the correct topology in mind. Um, yeah, as I mentioned before, check the descriptions for the links, and you know, but with time you will you will, uh, you will get used to how um, to build topology around the joints. So the hand is starting to take shape. I think uh, I made some adjustments to the end of the thumb to make it more uh, thumb-like. And here, as you can see, I scale some of the edges together, so from the top view, it's, it looks more interesting uh, and more, more, more hand-like. I feel like. Uh, so, yep, I believe I'm gonna adjust the palm uh, side of the hand now. And uh, for me, after look, looking at a hand and modeling a hand for a long time, it just becomes a big big confusing mess and I don't know what looks right anymore so hand is uh, definitely something that I need to take breaks on and come back to it and listen to my first reaction to it like oh it's, uh, the things, fingers are too long and I'm gonna fix the fingers and just gonna move back to a different part of the model and then jump back to the hand from time to time. Here I made the bottom side a bit more uh, forward to kind of simulate the webbing between the fingers. Uh, that's a really subtle thing that you can miss but there is a distance between the fingers uh, so they are not in a V shape it's more like a U shape between the fingers and that's because of the webbing uh, in between the fingers and I just put put it in uh, quickly. Mm. Yeah, there is a bunch of things to keep in mind here, uh, but I'm now starting to weld together the fingers with the palm. Um, I think it's uh, 
it was about the time to make the jump. <laughs> it's always weird for me to break the instances up and start welding stuff together, but you know, you just have to keep working and uh, finish what you start. <laughs> so this is what I'm doing here and uh, trying to, you know, fix the connection between the palm uh, and the fingers make the topology a bit more clean and uh, more readable and it's here here it's very important to rotate the model around a lot check it from a lot of different angles because uh, it's you know it's, it's really easy to get get lost uh, and miss some of the important details of the hand but luckily you have the greatest reference for the hand uh, at the end of your arm, so whenever you are modeling a hand, you just keep up uh, the, the, your left hand and check it for reference. This is why I'm <laughs> doing the left hand of this character, basically, because I'm rotating around the viewport with my right hand and checking my left hand at the same time. So here we go. Uh, this is the first pass on the hand. It looks really, really weird from the front view, for me at least. Uh, it's too long, it's not bent enough, so there is definitely stuff that needs to be worked on here. But for me, it always works uh, like this, that I'm, I'm making a first pass on the model or on, on the hand or on the jumpsuit. I'm just making a first pass and then I'm going over with the whole on the whole model with a fresh eye and you know adding smaller or middle sized details in there and then uh, you know uh, look for stuff that I think uh, is uh, wrong or um, unproportional quickly make a strap here for the um, pistol holster I think that's what it's called or I hope it's what it's called because that's what I've been calling it for the whole video uh, so let's pray here quickly so this is just a cylinder I added here and then you know deleting top side bottom side scaling them down uh, to make an edge and then I'm going to redo the whole thing because I decided to match the underlying topology of the leg so it's an eight-sided cylinder here and that's it it's basically a strap so you could have like uh, grabbed a polygon loop and started dragging it around the leg and make it that way but it uh, was much quicker to just put a cylinder there delete the top side the bottom side and scale it down and then there you go you have the strap here mm. so yeah, there's like 10 different ways that you can make this uh, strip here. You you can also start out from a box or whatever, basically. But it's just taking a few seconds sometimes before jumping into modeling a new object and think through what kind of shape would be the most beneficial. Uh, it's sometimes worth the time. So here again, I'm like, oh, let's do the holster here um, and uh, you know I decided to start with a box and then fix that up apply the symmetry modifier that we learned about mm, and then quickly change it looking at the weapon how it looks with the weapon and figuring out where I can make it thicker or thinner uh, the first iteration of the holster was pretty robust, it was really big and uh, I don't know, clunky but I think uh, it's uh, it will be definitely be redone later on in the video or off screen but one thing that I realized, realized is that I think it kind of looks cool from the bird's eye view uh, because Fallout 2 is a top-down game and like overemphasizing shapes from a top-down perspective is uh, sometimes really beneficial making stuff more or making stuff a bit bigger than they should should have been 
uh, is uh, it can look good because sometimes the details get lost from that view from the top down view because of the distance so um, the holster is now kind of a bit too big but I will fix that and make the silhouette a bit more interesting later on I just wanted to make a quick uh, bag for the knife I still don't know what the name of it what's the name of it but as you can see I just use the geometry of the knife as a base and ex ex uh, extruded polygons from that and now we have a bag for the knife I know for a fact that it's not called a bag but I don't know what it is so let's stick with that here I used uh, the boots and exported the gem or detached the geometry and made the strap that way and as you can see it's the same strap basically as on the tie but I used a different method there uh, because of the shape of the boot it was easier to do it like that so that's the second way of doing a strap on a, on a skin or you know on the character just quickly mm, welding in the top side or I mean the scarf area of this mm, collar area of the hoodie and yeah I'm stitching together some parts of this mm, character here and I think I will jump right into making the peep boy very soon uh, it will be probably a bit more simplified uh, than in the Fallout 3D games or Fallout 3 games but I think it's uh, it, it should work mm, from a top-down view at least mm, yep starting out with the biggest form and then I will build the big boy from there with the same method I did with the instancing thing uh, before so just starting out with a big shape and then uh, modeling from there I think uh, while I make the pip boy and make the final touches to the models I so far made I think it would be a good idea to kind of review what I talked about so far so first thing I think all the time is like making when I'm making the model is starting with the big forms and with, with primitives you know just getting the biggest shapes down also you can see it right now on the screen that uh, I'm making the biggest biggest shapes first all the time because you want to get the basics and the foundation of the model first I think it's uh, important or that's the way I do it um, you can experiment with other methods but I think it's a uh, a good good idea to start with this uh, so yeah definitely mm, big forms and the primitives are a good good foundation and a good starting point uh, also while modeling mm, the second thing that I talked about is while modeling keeping in mind the, the level of detail that you need to put in so how many polygons your object will be uh, depends on basically how far uh, you will see the model uh, you can like model every screw on the peep boy every like uh, detail or line of the cage or you know every scratch you can be you can model it on the screen or on the object but it's not worth the time or the effort or the resources if the object will be seen like in a three three pixel uh, size on the screen so from the bird's eye view this peep boy will be like really really small so um, like when you have to make decisions if I should model this out or not is this screw or nail really that important you can always think about how far this object will be seen and you know just go from there uh, I, I sadly or not sadly but I tend to you know 
make objects too low poly so um, sometimes my mo models are very squared and very r low poly looking even though they could be they are seen from uh, closer views as well so that's I know that about myself I'm trying to work on that uh, you should also keep an eye on keep keep uh, an eye out for you know mistakes that you sometimes make during modeling and uh, regarding the poly, ca poly count so uh, of course it depends on the engine or the style of the game you're working on how many polygons you will be using and also on the camera camera distance but you don't have to worry about that too much I think because by time and with the experience you will get the hang of it in no time so that's uh, not really a problem and also your your art lead or your programmer will be like oh this is too many polygons please fix it or remove some and then you can you know remove some of the edges and some of the polygons and then you're good to go so yep mm. Also, an important thing that we talked about in uh, modeling is uh, try and have each vertex, um, or I mean, each polygon should have like uh, four sides. So um, that's really helpful for UVing and also texturing and also for rigging and animation to try and keep each polygon four-sided so uh, they are a square yeah uh, if you can of course there will be areas where you need to use triangles like here on the screen I use uh, th four triangles uh, I mean on the screen of the pip boy I use four triangles but that's by choice and that area vo won't defar deform that much so it's not not a big deal but you know figuring out, figuring out where you can and where you cannot uh, put triangles uh, is uh, it's an art form in itself but yeah basically only think in triangles and for sided polygons you don't want to use uh, any more than that so because that will result in really weird uh, you know glitches sometimes and uh, 3d softwares can you know triangulate the models differently so yeah just keep it that way I think is a good thing to aim for uh, also uh, I mentioned about I mentioned that it's really important I think to be able to stick to the concept as much as possible um, as a 3D artist, like most of the time, mm, you get a concept and you have to bring it to life in 3D. So, if you are able to do it uh, in a way that it matches the feeling of the character just in 3D, then uh, you will you will have a mm, flourishing career. <laughs> it's a hard thing to do, I think but with time and practice uh, you will get it also in no time so it's really just try and focus uh, and get the concept down to the last detail and match your own work uh, in 3d to it as uh, close to it as possible mm. uh, yeah that's, that's that's really important i think and also like finding good references is uh, an important thing uh, I used references for the hand uh, by the end of the video uh, it was just not recorded mm. and even during the texture painting I used references for it uh, and yeah like references for folds and knives and everything just don't be afraid go up to Google or Pinterest and check as many as you want or however many you feel like will help you and you know uh, that will help your workflow and 
also make the end results much better. So instancing was another thing like copying uh, one object over as an instance and if you modify one then the other will be modified also. It's a really useful tool. Try and see during modeling what you can you know copy over like that and after you are satisfied with that you can collapse it all down and you know make them unique and individual uh, each of them so that was important also uh, thinking of the silhouette was also interest, uh, interesting and uh, important like modeling is mostly so you will <laughs> not really see the model what you are seeing uh, in 3D is the textures so uh, basically the model is only the silhouette of the character mm, if you want to break it down uh, that much so just focus on the outer line of the model and rotate it around a lot and check it from every angle see how the out, uh, outer silhouette works from each angle and adjust it accordingly to make it look good um, and also like the active mindset of watching the videos uh, or the texturing or the modeling is uh, don't just you know accept it because I say it is that way uh, you can you know experiment pick up the things I did uh, well or you you, you liked and leave out the things that I that I did wrongly or or that that you didn't didn't uh, find useful and develop your own workflow this is really important I think um, that way you will just enjoy working that much more so uh, yep anatomy and drawing you know I talked a lot about it but mm, I think it's worth mentioning again uh, just pick up some anatomy books I will link them in the description description and you know pick them up and that's it basically uh, what we talked about in the video and now back to uh, like this what I'm doing here is connected all the instance together and uh, you know fix them uh, to, to match the standing character um, and now I'm just going over the whole thing and fixing vertexes and moving them to their correct place. Mm. Uh, it's also sometimes really useful to like um, <coughs> move on and move on other parts of the model and then come back with a fresh eye. So. Mm. <coughs> so you can notice the changes uh, quicker that way or I mean the mistakes you can notice them much quicker mm. uh, here I think I'll stay still for a lot of time and then oh there is the head I magically, magically appeared the head from out of nowhere uh, I could make a tutorial if you guys want to just you know leave a comment I'm not even sure how many people will uh, you know like uh, what I did here or follow the follow the tutorial along the whole way so if you guys want to uh, see more of this video more of these tutorials or something then you really just need to let me know in the comments or something because otherwise I would just not make any more of them so <laughs> uh, that's how it is uh, so yeah as I said just fixing up some squaring issues because I always make my models too low poly and added some extra loops on the waist area to make it more soft fixing some issues on the back hitting relax a couple of times and then you know just going over the whole model watching uh, some of the issues there is also like a thing that I realized over the years that no matter how I try and get uh, the model vertex perfect <laughs> it 
most of the or a lot of issues will come out when I start texturing. So uh, during texturing, I will always notice something that oh, I could have added a loop here or add an extra fold here, an extra loop, and make it more interesting. So um, I just always try and keep an eye out during texturing to uh, see what I could improve the model uh, on. And it's it's okay to realize during the texturing that, oh, that's really bad, why did I do that? And you can just fix it quickly. Um, yep. Here I fix the issues because I move the legs a bit yeah, in the earlier stage. <coughs> Do I have? Oh yes, I have water. Nice. So using the snap tool, snapping the vertexes to um, to the symmetrical part of the character, adding some extra loops, and doing the same thing on the other side. Uh, snapping them with the snap tool that we learned in the first video mm, and that's it. I hope I covered everything in the first video, all the tools that I used but during commentating this one I didn't notice anything that I didn't talk about so that's hopefully it's the case but if I missed something and I clicked something during this video that I didn't talk about in the first one then definitely uh, let me know in the comments or wherever. So uh, here using soft selection to make the fingers more thin towards the end or the tip of the finger. Uh, I think it just helps to make it more uh, believable. And then I think here I'm gonna make the palm area much much more thicker uh, to have it more mm, thickness, to give it more thickness. Mm, as, as I said, like just uh, going back to different parts of the model over and over again and checking what you can change there is uh, very important, I think. So, yep, mm, adding the way, uh, wrist area to the hand. So, mm, it can actually be used as a joint later on when I'm rigging the character. The reason I didn't include the rigging uh, episode with this tutorial series is because everybody uses or nobody uses 3ds Max for rigging or animation as far as I know. I only met people who are like uh, using Maya and uh, Maya for rigging and Maya for animation. Uh, all the big uh, studios use it, I think, I believe. Riot Games uses Maya, Maya also for uh, rigging and uh, animation as well. So, yeah, mm, there is not really a point in <coughs> learning rigging in 3ds Max, but, you know, if somebody wants to learn that, maybe I can show it in a video. Uh, and if it turns out that every studio on the planet uses 3ds Max, I just didn't know, then, you know, I'm always open to make another video about rigging and posing and uh, setting up the skeleton and everything, but it's uh, it's kind of boring, boring technical side for the artistic types, but there are people who are into that type of thing, like techni technical art, so I don't know, I kind of enjoy it. Mm, but I don't need it that much uh, in my work nowadays. So yeah, here again, just selecting uh, some parts of the hand, and making it more believable uh, from different angles. Uh, yep, and this was about basically, uh, I think, the modeling part of this video series and uh, I hope you guys learned something uh, that you enjoy mm, and then you can join me in UVing these models in the upcoming videos uh, and after that we are going to texture all of it uh, so 
I'm going to do a couple of more changes here, but uh, it's not recorded. So you can download the, uh, the model and everything from Gumroad, as I mentioned earlier. And you can check the final model and how I did it, uh, the UVs and the model. So definitely do that, a final perf as a goodbye, and see you guys in the next video.